Hi there. Now that we've taken a look at overloaded methods, we're going to explore further constructors. In particular, we're going to take a look at default and overloaded constructors, and the difference between those and how they impact on how we can create our objects. Constructors are not a new idea to us. We've been using them from the very outset when we started looking at instantiable classes. Constructors are used to create an instance of an instantiable class. A constructor that takes no arguments is known as a no arg constructor, or also known as a default constructor. And the reason for this is, if we had no, constru no constructor to our instantiable class, this no arg constructor is automatically added by the compiler, but only if no other constructor is present. So to date in any of our instantiable classes that we've created, we have put in a constructor, a no args constructor with no arguments in the brackets, but we've then gone on to initialize any strings or integers that we've used as data members in the class. In this particular example, you can see we have a class called simple and a constructor called simple with empty round brackets and empty curly brackets. So what's happening here is we have a no arg constructor, but also the default constructor, which would be added to the instantiable class had we not written it in ourselves. So that's your default constructor, and that's not a new concept to us at this stage. If we've got a default constructor or a no args constructor in our instantiable class, when we create an instance of an instantiable class, it looks like this. When you want to construct a new object, you use the new keyword. So if we had an instantiable class called employee, we would say employee E equals new employee. And the new keyword activates our constructor, which makes a new object of employee called E. Because there are no parameters in our brackets in our employee class, we put no parameters in the brackets here when we could create it. We then go on and use our set methods so e.setEmpID to set the employee ID. We use the .setName method to set the name John Smith. And we use the setSalary method to set the salary. From there then, we can print the employee ID, the name, and the salary by saying e.getEmpID, e.getName, and e.getSalary. So that's straightforward enough. Nothing new there that we haven't seen before. Overloaded constructors, however, can replace the no argument constructor where we can actually set all of the values of the data members. So in this example here, we have our class employee and it has three data members, string name, int mpid, and double salary. In our constructor then, we have public employee and this time, rather than having empty round brackets, we have filled them with int mpid, string name, and double salary. What this means then is we can take each of these and we can assign them to our variables much the way that we typically would in our set methods. So inside our constructor we have this.name equals name, this.mpid equals mpid. So it doesn't mean that we don't need our set methods. We have those later on, okay? Imagine that I've gone to the effort and I've typed all of those out. We've got them represented here, but obviously this is not the full code. Okay, so I still have my set methods for mpid, name, and salary. But now if I want to, I can actually, when I create an employee object, I can assign all of these values to start with. It's important to remember, if we do not declare a constructor, the default constructor is given for us. However, if we declare our own constructor, much the way that we have to date, or by doing an overloaded constructor like we just saw in the previous example, we no longer get the default constructor. Okay, so we, if we need it, we need to write it ourselves. What this means is this. When I have my overloaded constructor, I can create an employee E, which is a new employee, and rather than having empty round brackets, I must this time give it the information. ID 101, name John Smith and salary 20,000. Because my code only has an overloaded constructor, when I go to create this particular object, it insists on having these three data members in the brackets. 
if I try to do it without the content in the brackets, it won't work. I'll get an error because I don't, in my class, have a constructor that expects empty brackets. Okay? So by doing this, I automatically create an employee E and assign these, these values to the data members and then I can print it much the same way that I did before. E.getEmpID, E.getName, E.getSalary. I think the best way to clarify all of this is to do it using an example. So if we take the example to develop an application to store the details of a particular assessment for a module where all assessments have a name, a type and a weighting. So the name of an assessment might be your OOP project, a type of an assessment might be continuous assessment or it might be terminal assessment which would be your exam and a weighting would be how much the assessment is worth in the overall module. So for example, we're currently doing an OOP project, which is continuous assessment, and the assessment itself is worth 35% of the overall module. So let's switch over to NetBeans and take a look at how this is done. Okay, here I am in NetBeans, and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to open a new project. To do that, we do File, New Project. We want a Java application. And we're going to name this, I'm just going to call it constructors. Okay, I want to browse. This is really important when you're creating a new project in NetBeans. I want to browse to where I'm going to store it so that it doesn't get saved in the default folder, which I'm unlikely to find later when I'm looking for it. So I'm going to go into my video examples folder. You can see now I've mapped where I want that to be stored. I've selected create main class, it's usually selected when you, when you come to this screen. And rather than call my main class constructors, I'm going to change this to assessment app, okay? Because usually I would use app in the name of my main class. Be careful now not to delete the first constructors dot, okay? Because that's important in the mapping of your main class. Leave that there, it's just what comes after the dot that we change. Then I click finish. And you'll see now I have my constructors project has been created. And in my source you'll see I've got an assessment app.java file. That has given me my main class which we'll come to later. But first off, we need to add a new class now for our instantial class. So we select our package, right click, new, Java class. And this is going to be called assessment, because we're making our assessment object. And simply click finish, everything else can remain the way it is. And now I've got this new class called assessment. Obviously up the top, you will add your details for your, your author should already been a, be assigned. Add your date and your name of your class. I'm going to skip over that for now and jump straight in. So our problem asked us to create an application that would accept the name of an assessment, the type of an assessment, and the weighting of an assessment from the user. So I'm going to need three data members. My data members in my instantial class, remember, are private. So private int um, or, sorry, we're not dealing with employee IDs anymore, we're dealing with names. So private string name private string type and private int weighting. Okay? Then I come to my constructor. Now, typically, the constructor that we would add here would be public assessment, nothing in the brackets, and in here then we would say name equals new string, type equals new string, and weighting equals zero. Okay, and that's a perfectly fine no args constructor. It's called a no args constructor because there are no arguments inside the round brackets here which are highlighted in yellow. Okay, 
We can go on then and add our um, setters and getters by using the insert code function in NetBeans. And I'll go to, in this instance, we want setters and getters for everything because I want to be able to set the name, the type, and the weighting. And I also want to be able to get them so that I can print them. So I'm going to do setters and getters, select everything, generate, and there we get get name, set name, get type, set type, get weighting, set weighting. Okay, now traditionally we would have done all of our setters, our compute method if there was any, and all of our getters, but in this instance the order is slightly different. It doesn't really matter because they're methods, so the order of the methods isn't an issue. What this enables us to do now is to go to our app class. And in our app class, again, we would add our comment at the top of the class, okay? But I'll leave that for you to do yourself. And in here then, we would create a new instance of assessment. So assessment A equals new assessment, uppercase A there. Nothing in the brackets because my constructor in my instantial class is not expecting anything in the brackets. Then I have to go and I have to say a dot set name OOP project a dot set type again the string continuous assessment and a dot set weighting and we'll just say the project is worth 35%. Okay. From there then, I can print all of those details by pulling them back out of A. So I've added all of those details to object A. And now I can print them back out. System.out.println assessment name plus a dot get name and then system dot out dot print ln assessment type plus a dot get type and system dot out dot print ln assessment weighting plus a dot get weighting. Now you'll notice NetBeans has highlighted a couple of things here for me. The first thing I notice is append. I don't want to do append, I want to do print ln. Sometimes NetBeans will put in the method it thinks you're trying to call after the dot, and so just keep an eye on that, it might change what you thought you had there. I have a red squiggly line here under my 35, that's because in my instantial class I have said that waiting will be an int, and an int doesn't need to be encased in quotation marks, so I'll take those out, and hopefully that will fix that problem. Okay. Now that we've got all of that done, let's just run this program and see what the output is. Assessment name, OOP project, assessment type, continuous assessment, and assessment weighting 35. So that's exactly what we wanted. Let's go back to our instantial class now and let's add an overloaded constructor, one with all of the arguments in it. Public assessment. So here we have two methods with the same name. Okay. But it's okay so long as we have a different arrangement of arguments in the brackets. Okay? So I want to do an assessment constructor that expects a string for name, a string for type, and an int for weighting. Okay? In here then we'll say this dot name equals name, this dot type equals type, and this dot weighting equals 
weighting. Okay? So I'm doing my constructor and all of my setters in the one go essentially. So I'll pop back into my app class and what this allows me to do then is I can make a new assessment object, assessment B equals new assessment. Okay, but this time rather than put nothing in the brackets, I'm going to say OOP exam followed by terminal assessment followed by 50. Okay, all separated by commas in the same way that they were when we wrote the constructor. What that allows me to do then is essentially everything that I did here when I printed all of that, so I'm going to copy, not that I encourage copying and pasting your code, you need to remember it, but I'm just going to copy all of this for speed. System.out.println, and rather than do a.getName, I'm going to do b.getName, b.getType, and b.getWaiting. Now when we run this program, in our output window at the bottom, you'll see we have the OOP project, the continuous assessment, we're at 35%, and then directly below that, OOP exam, terminal assessment, waiting 50. So depending on what we're trying to do, really we've saved ourselves a few lines of code there. We have the same thing in four lines as previously we had in seven. So you can save yourself a little bit of effort. Now, this would not be possible if we didn't have the overloaded constructor in the instantial class. Nor would this be possible if we didn't have the no args constructor. So if I go back to my instantial class and I now comment out this no args constructor just so I can show you what might happen. We've commented this out now, so for all intents and purposes, Java thinks this method doesn't exist. When we go back to our app class and we try to create an assessment object with no arguments in the constructor, in the brackets, we'll see we get this error. Constructor assessment and class assessment cannot be applied to given types. So it's telling me, and it says here, actual and formal argument lists differ in length. So I'm giving no list of arguments here, but the only constructor that's here in the instantial class has an argument list. Okay? And it's very important that you remember the order of these arguments and the number of arguments matters. I can have any number of constructors in this instantial class so long as the number and the order of arguments differs. So if I wanted I could leave out type or I could do waiting name type or type waiting name. What you need to remember then is because I've done name then type then waiting here in my app class when I created it I had to do name, type and waiting. Had I done these in an other order it wouldn't have worked so well. Let's see that happen. Let's take the 50 and put it first. So I'm sending in the waiting, followed by the name, followed by the type, which is the same number of arguments, even the same arguments, but in a different order. And immediately I get an error here. Okay, and it's the same one, similar to the last time, actual argument int cannot be converted to string by method invocation. So it's saying you're giving me the wrong arguments at the wrong time. I'm giving an int when what it expects to be first is a string. So you need to be mindful of that. Your arguments here for your overloaded constructor must match the way that they're listed in the overloaded constructor in the instantial class. So if I go back to my instantial class now and I take out these comments, you'll see that that error goes from the app class straight away and it will allow me to do that. So there you have it. Overloaded constructors, default constructors, no arg constructors. You can have any number of constructors so long as the arguments list differ for each one and it will just depend on the problem at hand. Often this can be quite useful if you're testing something, you haven't quite got your user interface ready to go, so you're not worried about where it's all coming from, you want to just send it some default values to ensure that the methods are working correctly. That would be a good opportunity for you to use this. But you'll see the opportunities arise 
as you work through your various projects and assignments and such like. So I hope that's helped to clarify constructors for you. Um, can, you can continue on now and check out some of the other videos that are available under the topic inheritance.